today's episode, we're looking at the channel mixer adjustment inside of Photoshop. I'm really excited about this lesson because the channel mixer has always been one of those adjustments that has been very hard to wrap your head around. You know, like, how does it work? And a lot of people just give up on it and don't even use it because they don't know how the darn thing works. So today, I want to unlock the mystery behind the channel mixer adjustment layer inside of Photoshop. So let's get started. And by the way, stick with me to the very end because at the end of this training, I want to show you a real-time adjustment using the channel mixer adjustment layer. All right, so let's get started. Let's start off by talking about color modes. All right, and we can find those color modes in the Photoshop menu up here under image. All right, and if you hover over mode, you'll see a drop down menu opens up and you'll see a bunch of different color modes inside of here. Let's just look at some of these grayscale, index color, RGB color, CMYK color, lab color, multi channel. You can use any of these color modes that you so choose, but most of us are using the RGB color mode pretty much consistently all the time okay so that's what we're really talking about today so now that you know that let's go here and look at my screen so i it's i have here photoshop rgb color mode now i'm going to try to explain this to you the best i can uh, photoshop uses additive primary colors and those primary colors there's only three of them by the way and they are red green and blue and red green and blue represents the rgb color mode standing for red green and blue primary colors again additive colors all additive means is that you can combine these colors together and get different colors or you could subtract colors and get different colors in other words you could subtract green from red and get a color you can subtract green from blue and get another color and so on and so forth and we'll see that here in a in a little bit let's take a quick look at the channel mixer adjustment inside of photoshop now you notice you have some presets you can use here you also have a section that says monochrome with a little checkbox you can use that to make black and white conversions we're not looking at those today we're mainly interested today in the output channel and when I click this drop down dialog box here, you'll notice we only have three channels inside of here. The adjustment isn't that hard to use, guys. There's a red, a green, and a blue output channel associated with the channel mixer, okay? And then you have three sliders, a red, a green, and a blue slider. All right, now let's look at the uh, diagram I have here. Channel mixer adjustment, all right? Let's start off with the red output channel. Okay, the red out output channel has these three sliders involved red green and blue and here they are over here red green and blue and that's what these are representing okay when you're on the red output channel which is right here the output channel is red when you're on that channel when you move the red slider to the right you're adding reds to your red tones of your image when you move the slider to the left you're subtracting red from the red tones of your image. When you move the green slider to the right, you're adding red to the green tones of your image. And when you move the slider to the left, you're subtracting red from the green tones of your image. When you go to the blue slider and you adjust it to the right, you're adding red to the blue tones of your image. And when you move the slider to the left, you're subtracting red from the blue tones of your image. Now, when you change the output channel to green, then when you move the red slider, you're adding green to your red tones. When you move the slider to the left, you're subtracting green from your red tones. When you move the green slider to the right, you're adding green to your green tones. When you move your green slider to the left, you're subtracting green from your green tones. When you move the blue slider to the right, you're adding green to your blue tones. And you, when you move it to the left, you're subtracting green from your blue tones. Pretty simple, right? Now, let's go to the next one. When we go to the blue channel, all right? Now, on the blue output channel, when we move the red slider to the right, you guessed it, we're adding blue to the red tones. When you move the blue slider to the left, you're subtracting blue from your red tones. 
the green slider, move it to the right, you'll add blue to the green tones. Move it to the left, you will subtract blue from the green tones. And then we go to the blue slider. You move it to the right, you'll add blue to your blue tones. When you move it to the left, you'll subtract blue from your blue tones. Let's do a brief recap. All right, Photoshop in RGB color mode. Remember, that's an additive color mode. And red, green, and blue are the three primary colors that Photoshop is using to make all colors. All colors are created by mixing these three primary colors. Got it? And now for the fun stuff, seeing how this channel mixer adjustment actually works. And remember to stay tuned to the end because I'm going to actually adjust an image with the channel mixer adjustment so you guys can see how this works in a real editing situation. All right. You'll notice on the screen I have red, green, and blue blocks. All right. And notice the channel mixer over here. I'm set to the red output channel. I could easily set this to the green or the blue output channel. And then I have three sliders over here representing the red, green, and blue primary colors that Photoshop is using to make all colors. And they are additive colors. All right. So when I'm in the red output channel mode, when I move the red slider to the right, I'll be adding reds to the red colors of the image. But notice one interesting thing here. Red is set by default by Photoshop to 100%, meaning red is already fully saturated. And that's why you see this block looking like red right here, because it's fully saturated at red. When I move the slider to the right, I'll be adding more red to the red channel, but it's already fully saturated, so you don't really see a change. But watch the change happen when I move it to the left. Notice how it eventually turns to black. And the reason it does is because I'm totally stripping red from the red colors of the image. I'm going to hit reset. Now let's add red to the green colors of the image because I'm still in the output channel of red. So when I move the green slider to the right, I'm adding red to greens. And notice greens turn yellow. Now when I move the green slider to the left, I'll remove red from greens and it'll eventually go back to pure green. I'll hit reset. Now let's go to blue. When I move the blue slider to the right, I'm adding red to the blue colors and watch the blue block change. It goes to magenta and when I move it to the left, eventually it'll go back to pure blue. I'll hit reset again. Now the constant slider, the way it works is, imagine that all these sliders were tied together and when I move the constant slider to the right, they all moved equally to the right at the same time. And that's exactly what happens. You won't see the move, but believe me, it is happening. So I'm going to move the constant slider to the right, so I'll equally be adding red to all three of my primary colors. And watch these blocks. So here we go, I'm moving the constant to the right. You notice that the green and the blue blocks change in tint, but the red remains the same. Because remember, the red was already fully saturated at 100%. Now when I move the constant slider to the left, watch what happens. Green and blue come back. But red goes to black because I've totally drained red from the red colors. Let's hit reset. Now, let's go to the green output channel and go through this whole scenario again. Now, when I move the red slider to the right, I'm adding green to reds. And you notice the, the uh, red block turned yellow. Now, when I move the red slider to the left, I'm going to remove green from reds. And eventually, the red block will turn back to red. I'll hit reset. The green is defaulted by Photoshop at 100% when I'm on the green output channel. So if I move the slider to the right, nothing happens to green because it's fully saturated. When I move it to the left the whole way, eventually it turns black because I've totally stripped green from green. I'll hit reset again. Now I'm going to move the blue slider to the right, adding green to the blue colors. And you notice the blue turns cyan. When I move it to the left, I'll remove green from the blues. And eventually it'll go back to blue. I'll hit reset again. The constant slider, again, these will all move equally when I move the constant slider to the right. So I'll be adding green to all three of those colors at once. And you'll notice that the red and the blue change in tint, but the green remains green because green was already saturated at 100%. Now I'll move the constant slider to the left. And you'll notice red and blue return to red and blue, and green goes black because I've stripped green from green. Let's hit reset and do our final color. And hopefully this is all sinking in, guys. So now we're going to blue. 
So when I move the red slider to the right, I'm adding blue to my reds, and you notice my red turned magenta. Take blues off my reds by moving the red slider to the left, it will go back to red. Take the green slider, move it to the right, I'm adding blue to greens. Greens will eventually turn cyan, move it to the left. Green will eventually come back to pure green. Hit reset. Now I'm going to go to the blue, and you'll notice blue is defaulted by Photoshop at 100%. So if I move blue to the right, nothing happens to blue. But if I go to the left, I'll start to drain blue from blue, and eventually it'll go black. All right, let's hit reset. Now the constant slider. All these are going to move equally together to the right. All right, so I move the constant slider to the right, and you'll notice that the red and green change in tint, but the blue remains the same because blue was already saturated to 100%. Now let's move the constant slider to the left. Red and green come back to red and green, but blue goes to black because I've drained blue from the blue colors of the image. And that's basically it, guys. So next up is the actual editing of an image inside of Photoshop. So stay tuned. All right, as promised, here comes an edit of an actual image using the channel mixer. I have this red heart tree, kind of cool, right? It's a stock image. And against this cloudy sky with a little blue back here, basically what I want to do with the channel mixer, guys, is make this tree a little more red, make it pop a little bit, and also make this blue in the background a little bit more blue. And I'm going to use the channel mixer to do that. So let's get started here. So first off, I think what I'm going to do is uh, try to make my sky a little bluer. To do that, I'm going to go to the blue output channel because that makes sense. There's blue here, and I want to increase blue in the blues. And the blues right now are not fully saturated. So if I take this blue slider here in the blue output channel, remember, I'll be adding blue to blue, so I'll pull the blue up. Let's pull it up the whole way here. And you'll notice when I do, I also add some uh, bluish tints back into these red tones back in here. So what I'm going to do now is remove blue from the red colors. So I'm going to come up here to the red slider and start to pull it back and watch the image till it looks pretty decent, okay? And say maybe right, right around here. And let me take some blue off the greens and see what happens. And look, I'm getting some orange stones back here. So I'm just kind of looking at my colors, guys, and seeing what looks good. So I'm just trying. I'm just adjusting this with my eye. Notice this number right here at 114 in this little warning uh, indicator here. That's telling me you've went past the 100 threshold here. Try to remain right around 100. Now, you don't have to, guys, but it's best if you can try to stay around 100 here. If you go past it, it's no big deal. You're not going to have your hand slapped by the Photoshop police. But you want to try to maintain it around 100 right here, 100%. So let me just alter the blue here, or I'm sorry, the red here a little bit. And I'm trying to balance that out at 100. Now I'm going to adjust the screen a little bit. I don't want to touch my blue because I want that blue to stay up full. There I am at 100%. Let's look at the before and after right here on the channel mixer. Okay, so you notice my blues are bluer, which looks good. Now I need to make my reds redder. So what channel do you think I would use? Ah, red? Yeah, you're right. I'm going to go to red, to the red output channel. So now, whenever I adjust any of these sliders, I'm going to be adding more red if I move the sliders to the right, or subtracting red if I move the sliders to the left. So let's move the red uh, slider to the right, adding more red to the image. Okay, somewhere maybe right around here. And I've also put red up into my blues. So let's subtract red from my blues. So maybe right about there. And I'm looking at these tones back here. I might want to alter these tones a little bit. I'm just going to play with the green slider. Add a little red to the greens. No, nope. take a little red from the greens. Uh, right around there. I'm at 97 here, guys. I'm really close to the 100. And if I get 100, I'll get an A. So let me get this right at 100. There's 100. So let's see if I did what I said I would do, guys. I said I would make this tree more red and the sky more blue. Let's look at the before and after. So here's the before and there's the after. So the channel mixer did it, guys. It's a very cool adjustment tool and I hope you give it a try. Well, guys, if you enjoyed this video today, 
please give it a like and share it with your friends. And also, um, if you're not yet subscribing to my channel, please do so and click that bell notification icon so you can be informed of all the new training videos that I'm putting out on a regular basis. Well, guys, I will see you next time.